How about now? Any sound? Let's see. It says we have no sound. I think I fixed it now. Should be good, hopefully. How about now? Any sound? Let's see. It says we have no sound. I think I fixed it now. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Yes, I'm done.
All righty. We'll get going here tonight. Um, what I am looking at doing, by the way, I'm Chris Kruger. I'm, um, I'm excited to be able to do this uh, and uh, be able to share some patterns with you that have been real successful for me with, um, with really specifically warm water um, in the crayfish realm of things. We know that that bass and, and warm water fish really capitalize on crayfish for a lot of their forage, um, as well as bait fish and leeches and some other things. But we're going to focus tonight on crayfish. Um, we're going to look at uh, a couple different patterns that I'm that have been real successful for me over the years, both for for bass and for trout. Um, I like to to have my boxes be pretty pretty much the same and just with some slight alterations. So I like to have my, my patterns be uh, cross compatible between warm water and cold water species, and then uh, easy to alter colors in a, in a number of different ways. So um, we're gonna start off, we're, we're looking at three different patterns tonight. Um, one that's uh, uh, really just been lights out for me for the last couple of years. Um, a couple patterns that have been on uh, MFC's uh, catalog for the last number of years. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll find something to take home with you today and uh, put into your boxes. So some great things for uh, to, to be seen here with some Whiting Farms um, products. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to start with a, uh, a pattern that that has, uh, we'll start small and kind of go a little bit bigger. This has been a, a pattern that's been on MFC's uh, catalog for me for the last number of years. And uh, this is the little dragon crop. What I was primarily looking for in this pattern is uh, is a, a pattern that was to imitate immature crayfish. Um, it was to imitate uh, crayfish that that are either in their small phases or just something that was a little bit more towards carp flies, um, and that's where we kind of ended up with this. So, first thing we're going to do is uh, this is a Nordic wet fly from Partridge Redditch. And uh, really all we're looking for is a stout hook um, and just something that can handle the, the weight of carp. Um, I will tell you that bass will absolutely just pummel this thing uh, when they're, they're focusing on those, on those small crayfish. Uh, this is a perfect pattern to do. I do this in a lot of different colors. Um, here in Colorado, we have a lot of what's called uh, the, the northern crayfish, which are mostly olive, a little bit of tan, and then some, uh, some blue in their claws. So we've got some uh, some varying colors in there. Also tie it in an orange, a brown, a black, all kinds of different colors for this. But uh, this is one of my favorite colors. So, and you can match the size to this for for whatever uh, your forage or your your little crayfish are. This is uh, I believe this is a size six uh, Nordic hook. And then uh, we're just gonna just gonna give enough weight to this to invert the hook when we're fishing it. So. Carp oftentimes, I mean, unless you're fishing some big water, are going to be a little bit spooky, especially around around here. We, uh, I don't want to make a real big splash on here, so what I'm looking for is is just enough to get the fly down, get it down in the feeding zone, be able to put it where I needed to put it without making a big sl splash and possibly spooking some, some bass or some carp. Um, so these are a size small uh, brass dumbbell. I'll do these in bead chain as well, but uh, brass is kind of my favorite uh, go to kind of weight system on here. We started off with some 140 UTC in uh, in an olive brown color. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of marabou on the back here. This just gives us a little bit of mouth parts, uh, just just a little bit of movement in the water, gets it standing up nice. And uh, what I like to do for that is uh, some mini barred bugaboo from MFC. And what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to pick a, a plume here, and I, what I like to do is have something that's not super, super uh, thick barring, so a little bit lighter side on there. I'm going to strip away a little bit of this fluff down here at the bottom, and I'm going to use these nice wispy tips. The thing I like about MFC's Bugger Boo is that um, it doesn't tend to be as, as thick or as bushy as some of the other Bugger Boo. Um, and what I'm going to look for here is, is just the tips of these, and I'm going to go about a shank length long. And I'm, I've taken the thread a little bit down the bend of the hook so that this uh, flares up when it's sitting down on the bottom here. Okay, so we've got that, that kind of kiltered up like that. Okay, we're going to wrap this forward so that we have a nice 
smooth underbody. I'm going to move my thread forward, capture this, and then bind it down. It's a good way to make sure you don't have any lumps or anything in your in your underbody. Do that on your streamers or or whatever um, nymphs or bugs that you're looking at. Okay. We're going to add in a couple rubber legs here. Um, our rubber legs on this, I really like this, this uh, pumpkin and light blue coloration. It matches our crayfish really well here um, and also gives a nice clarity to uh, in, in some dirty water. Just enough of that little um, coloration to, to catch some attention. So I'm going to take one piece here and I'm going to fold it around the back side of my thread and I'm going to capture it on one side of the hook here. Now what I'm looking for here is I'm going to alter where this is at just by pulling it so that my blue ends are a little bit longer than my marabou here. And the reason I want that is that I want the, the, the brown, the pumpkin down here towards the base of where those claws are coming out and that blue to be kind of where the tip of the, uh, the claw would be. On these immature crayfish, they really don't have a, a whole lot of that big claw, we're looking at little tiny claws here, and we just want that little flash of blue that they that they have along with that pumpkin. So it kind of is a, a, a modulation of different colors here. Okay, and then we'll tie that over on the other side. What I'll do is I'll just trim these just a little bit longer than the, the tail. And those are going to kick out like that. So we're using rubber legs instead of using rubber legs as... Uh, in, in a large combination, we're using these as kind of immature crayfish claws. All right, we're going to take a, a little bit of um, D rib or vinyl rib. This is V rib in a uh, medium sized brown. And I'm going to take a piece off of this. This is going to be kind of a ribbing. Gives us some, gives us some, uh, some kind of density to this as well as, as a little bit of um, segmentation of that crayfish body. Okay, so we're going to start it up here. I'm just going to kind of keep it on the, the bottom third of this. Okay, and then our our dubbing here is going to be a Sculpin Olive Whitlock's dubbing. And all we're looking for here is is a, a nice dark green, kind of dragonfly nymph-esque look for this. And the, the reason this is called the little dragon craws because um, I've had it taken from trout um, as, a, as a little dragonfly nymph. Most of the time I, I do them with olive um, on the backside here, just with a little bit of movement here. And I think some of those trout will take it as a, as a dragonfly nymph. And then obviously as an immature crayfish here on the, um, for this coloration here. So it, it's a, an effective pattern for, for multiple species and uh, insects here. Also take this and just uh, cut off the claws here and just fish it as as that way and it fishes really well as a dragonfly nymph as well So I'm gonna take this uh, vinyl rib and just kind of put it back in my into my material clip here Keep it out of the way It'll stick All right. Okay, and we'll take uh, this dubbing and what we're gonna do is gonna do a reverse taper here Okay, so if we're thinking about the The back side of this hook is actually the front side of a crayfish so it's going to be a little bit bigger here at the front than it is going to be at the back. So I want to kind of taper that down here. And I really like to, to mix and blend some dubbings on this. A lot of times I'll take a little bit of this this uh, this sculpin olive and mix it with a little bit of um, you know some tan or some brown colorations just to get a little bit of modeling in there. We want this to be nice and shaggy here, not not too tight because what we're going to do is we're going to pick this out when we're done and make it um, really move in the water. Okay, so we'll come back here. I'm gonna twist my my fly here. I'm gonna take that um, that V rib. I'm gonna make sure that it's going the right direction, and I'm just gonna start to rib this body.
capture that off, give a nice couple nice tight wraps and then some securing wraps behind it. Okay, and then we can take a, a pick here and just kind of pick out some of this these fibers, give it some swim, give it some movement. All right, now we're gonna invert the fly here. And this is uh, one of my favorite colorations on this is, this is this olive and blue, but I like to put a little bit of carapace on the top here that's, that's in this uh, kind of golden olive or straw, I think it's golden straw Brahma hen. And this Brahma hen, I absolutely love this Brahma. Um, and I use it a lot for my nymphs, a lot for um, really just in a lot of different applications. So this is a golden straw color. And it's kind of that golden olive-ish kind of look to it. And it's going to add some, some color variegation in our crayfish here. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the, the tip and I'm just going to pull it down. And I'm just going to pull and pop that tip. Okay. And what I'm looking for as far as where I'm placing this is I want that tip to be right in between the, the hook point, just around it. Okay. So I'm going to tie it in intentionally long. I'm just going to capture that with a couple loose wraps, and then I'm just going to pull this. And if it wants to slide on you, just make sure that it, it moves where you want it to. Kind of manipulate it with your fingers a little bit. But when that gets wet and swims backwards, it's going to allow the hook point not to alter where this feather is going to go. So as soon as I have that where I like it, I'm going to give a couple tight pull-down wraps on this and clip that off. Okay, and then we're going to go to the, uh, the collar hackle here. And this collar hackle is going to be the exact same uh, Brahma hen, but now in kind of a mottled olive, just a standard olive color here. And we just want this to veil around. The, the true magic comes when this thing gets wet. And you get all these colors that kind of bleed together and make it um, just a, a really nice looking bug. Okay, a little trick for you. If you want a little tail on this, you can take this tip and instead of popping that tip off, just tie it in right here on top and leave that tip. And guess what? Now you have a little tail on your crayfish. Okay, so I'm going to take my scissor blades and just kind of kind of comb these back, take my fingers, get them nice and, and pulled back wet fly style. And I'm going to start to wrap over the top here. Now the thing that I love about the thinness of these, of these stems is that not only can I get this, and this is where you can't get this on anything except for whiting, is I can get a little bit of that marabou from that feather in there because that thin, that thin stem allows me to get a whole turn of marabou on there and that really makes this fly swim and dance in the water. Okay, we'll just take a little bit more dubbing just to cover up some of our work here. Okay, we can kind of pick up our tail, get our thread underneath there, and then give us a nice uh, or, uh, whip finish at the end here. And when we're done, we get a nice buggy little dragonfly slash immature crayfish. 
and uh, this thing just catches carp like crazy, catches bass. It's amazing, you know, bass and carp live a lot on the same water, um, oftentimes here in Colorado, and and uh, it's amazing when you're fishing for a, for a carp and all of a sudden the bass swings through and, and uh, takes this thing out of you out of the mouth of a carp and you get kind of mad at the fact that you're that you're fishing for carp and the bass took it but man it's kind of fun when you when you can have multi-species and, and have this big cross platform a little bit here so um yeah just a just a fun little pattern to tie real easy to fill boxes with um you can do it in a couple different ways if you don't like having the the uh you can go to bead chain on the front there instead of a brass eye if you want to get down real quick do it with a lead eye um but otherwise it's a real nice little pattern um, for, for some smaller crayfish. Um, works really well for trout as well. So, um, all righty, let's, uh, let's see if we have any, any questions here. Hopefully that all makes sense for you. But overall, just a, just a great little pattern. Like I said, I love it in tan, black, um, kind of a rusty burnt orange. Um, but yeah, just a just a fun little pattern. So we'll do uh, questions as we're going along. I know uh, Tom is helping me out here with some of the questions and the comments that we that we have. But I'm I'm happy to answer some questions along the way if we have any. Um, so we'll go on to our to our next fly here. Um, the next fly is a little bit of an alteration of one of my really my most top producing crayfish pattern there is uh, period. I mean, I just absolutely love it. Oh, here's some questions. Was there any lead wrap under the body? Jamie, there's there's not, but you can definitely do that. Um, you know, definitely you can uh, cater this to your water if you want any lead wrap on there to just get a little bit of extra, um, you know, depth, just get that thing down like crazy, you definitely can. Um, we don't have a lot of deep water on here that I fish for carp. Uh, we do have some, you know, and, and I'll, I'll carry these in a, in a variety of different weights. Um, but those little brass eyes are kind of my favorite. Just lets it kind of naturally flutter down. Allows me, if I'm, if I'm looking at carp that are, that are not very, um, skittish or, or I can really get ahead of that carp and, and throw it out there and then drag and drop it. Um, and drag it in front of that fish. I'll definitely do something a little bit heavier, but I haven't, I didn't have any um, lead on this one. Absolutely, no problem at all. All right, so this is the Mardi Gras. Uh, the Mardi Gras, and this is kind of the, the 2.0 version of it. The Mardi Gras has, has been lights out my favorite, um, my favorite crayfish um, to to throw for bass. It has been a killer little. Uh, little uh, trout pattern as well. Let's get us uh, zoomed in here correctly and let's see if I can do all this. Give me, I need to, all right, we're actually looking okay here. All right. So the, the Mardi Gras got its name because we've got some beads on here and she's wearing her beads, just like in Mardi Gras. But the Mardi Gras is a, is a pattern that Montana Fly Company picked up for me. Um, it's been a, hands down, my most top producing um, crayfish pattern that I have in my box. And it's just been absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, multi days of, of 40 fish plus days on this thing. That's a durable pattern. It's a it's a great pattern. Got a lot of sparkle in the water without it being crystal flash or, or any type of uh, flashaboo on it. Just got some natural interior glow. And honestly, when I when I went to create this fly, I was looking for something that would add some segmentation but have some internal glow in the body that came from it. And uh, this, the first um, version of this was more towards a swimming crayfish. I wanted something that was going to be more of a slight serpentine action. Um, something that was going to be more of a swimming, like a strip, uh, not a lot of vertical jig on it. This version, the second version, is more of a, a hop and drop, put it right on the on the edge of, of um, structure, right on the edge of banks, right on the edge of, um, of those down trees, and fish it intentionally right where I know those fish are going to be sitting. So um, this is a, a Partridge Universal Predator Hook size one. Um, you can definitely tie these on any type of... Uh, 
straight eye streamer hook. What I, what I what the the key to this is is the bend. Okay, the Universal Predator has got an Aberdeen bend to it, um, and that's really important because these are those 3D beads. They're a hairline bead. Okay, and these beads have to fit over the top of that. Okay, so when we're looking at these beads, these are actually a a coated bead that has an iridescent finish on it. Um, and these 3D beads are great. They come in a number of different colors. Um, you know, the ones that MFC ties for me are, we do an, an olive and orange. They do a black and blue. Um, they do a tan. Um, and they do a, uh, let's see, they do olive and blue, black and, and blue, tan. I'm blanking on the other one. Anyways, I do them in about a million and a half different colors, and this is one of my favorite colors. Um, so we, we talked about the, the, the brown and, and blue um, coloration of the northern crayfish around here. That's one of my favorite colors that we have um, and, and probably my most productive um, side of things. Um, the, but when we get them with a little bit of orange in the claws, this is kind of how I prefer to tie them. And so we're going to we're going to start out I'm going to switch over to a 140 denier thread. And this is uh this is going to be kind of an olive and uh brown with a little bit of orange in the claws. Um and so we're going to start out with a partridge of redditch universal predator hook. And then I try to find the largest brass size that I can. So this is the the extra large um nature spirit uh you can do a, I can't find them any larger than that. You can go to a lead, but the, you'll see real quick why I like these these larger brass eyes um, and what it does with the beads. So I'm going to take this. I'm just going to put, a little bit of uh, X wraps around here. Just secure those down for me. Um, get those nice and set up. Now here's where I like the larger the larger eyes for me. If you look in the larger eyes, those beads sit right into that recess there, and it really just strengthens this entire bug. This, the, the hard part about this fly is just making sure that everything seats, seats appropriately and sticks, and it becomes the most durable fly in your box, and that's what we're looking for here. So if we can push everything up against into these recessed eyes, that'll make that even stronger to make sure that nothing spins on you. Okay? So I'm going to take this first bead, and I'm going to take it with my, with my thumbnail, and I'm going to push it into those recess and I'm going to take my thread, hop it over the top and pull that back into those eyes. Okay. And I'm just going to put a little thread down there. Okay. You've done a two bit hooker or any of the other, you know, multi bead flies that, that come out and you've, you've secured those beads back in there so that you can tie in between those. This is the same exact process that you're looking for. So I've got the second bead. I'm going to push that as, as tight in there as I possibly can. I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to pull it and create a little thread dam. Okay, now I'm going to do the third one. Pull it, create a little thread dam. Okay. Oh, it is the olive and orange, olive and blue, black and blue, and uh, tan. I uh, forgot the olive and blue um, versions of this that MFC does for me. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and else? So this is the uh, where we stop. So usually I'll, I'll prepare all my hooks just like this. Um, and then we got to look at the front end, the business end of, of the crayfish. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to go back to that MFC bugger boo here. This is the uh, olive and brown two inch. Okay. And I'm going to take two pieces of this. And I'm going to stack them on top of each other. Okay. So I'm just going to align the tips here. And I'm going to stack them on top of each other, and then I am going to grab the butt ends, and I'm just going to pull them forward, okay? And I'm just going to get a little bit, just a shank length of here. Now, if you want to do one of these a little bit lighter, you definitely can. I do two on the on this version. On the swimming one, I do one. Okay, so I'm going to do a, a shank length here, and I'm just going to take that, and I'm going to secure that down to the hook, some nice tight wraps, so nothing, nothing spins on me, okay? Cut this and get that all the way back in there. Okay, so I've got a clear, clear spot here. Now, if I wanted to put any flash or anything on here, you definitely can right in here. 
Um, we can put a little bit of orange or a little bit of blue or anything like that. Um, you can definitely do some, some flash in here. Um, but I'm going to put claws on this one. Now, this is the 4B uh, saddles that, that we have. Um, the 4B Hen. And I absolutely love these 4B saddles um, and these, these Hen backs. So I've got it in two different, two different colors. And this is the crawfish orange and the, the darker olive. And what I'm going to do is, is we're going to have, um, like I said, sometimes these, these olive crayfish, they've got a little bit of orange in the claws. This is a good way for, for us to uh, hide some color, and it just gives a nice subtle color to us um, when we're looking at this getting wet. Okay, so I'm going to take an olive, and on the inside of that olive, curving in, I'm going to put an, an orange. Okay, uh, excuse me, backwards, because they're going to be splaying outwards. Okay, um, so an orange on top of an olive, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take those and I'm going to tie them in right behind there. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Take an orange, put it on top of an olive. And when I say on top, I mean in the curvature of the of the uh, of the feather. So You've got the curvature of the feather coming downwards. This is the top of the feather. You're putting the orange on top of the olive. Did this with a couple guys in, in Texas with some red phase um, crayfish, putting a little bit of red on the inside of those olive claws. And when that thing gets wet, it's fantastic. So you can hide some color in here and just make it look a little more natural on the on the bug. Okay, so we'll go ahead and tie those down. All right, um, so we're gonna take some uh, rubber legs and these are the pumpkin and orange coloration. Like I said, we're doing the olive and orange or a little bit of brown and orange here. So I'm gonna take uh, four of these and I'm going to fold them around, around the thread. Okay. And I'm gonna put these kind of, if this was a clock, I'm gonna put them at 10 o'clock and two o'clock. But they're kind of coming out of the bottom of the body because this is going to be inverted. Okay, so if I invert this fly, the claws are on top, the legs are on bottom, gives us a little hop and drop, um, gives us some nice jigging motion to those legs, and they come out here. Okay, so then we're going to take this and I'm just going to cut it, but I'm not going to make them all the same length. This fish won't hit them that way. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take some American Rooster Saddle, okay? And this is the uh, American Rooster Saddle is, is probably the thing I use more than anything in my entire um, tying shop. Um, it is, for, for what I like to tie and what I um, like to fish, it is the best bang for the buck that you can possibly have. And it comes in so many different colors and so many different um, feathers on this, on this one pelt. You've got down here, you've got some nice short, feathers that'll that'll work nice for um, poppers and small streamers you got all the way up to um, big almost schlopping style feathers back here on the back I absolutely love I use this product probably more than anything in my in my uh, entire repertoire so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna take uh, one of the longer feathers on here um, one of the more schlopping esque feathers okay and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna strip it down and what I do is I strip it about halfway down the feather, okay? And we're looking at probably, oh, a little less than a shank length worth of fiber length here. And then I take this and I cut off just the, the backside here and I save that for another pattern. Have you ever seen my iced up baby? Um, that's where those come from is they are um, the, the tip ends of American Saddle. Okay, I'm going to take that. And I'm going to tie that in tip first. 
and I'm going to pull these back as I wrap them forward. Now, MFC uses Schlappen for uh, this feather. I highly prefer tying them this way with the American saddle. You get a lot more rigidity in that feather, um, a lot more um, profile in the in the fly. And when you strip this, the the American saddle um, comes and it and it pulses. It pulsates in the water a little more than Schlappen does. It's Schlappen uh, moves a little different, but it's it's going to fold down a little bit more than the than the rooster saddle. So um, I really I really like doing the American rooster instead of using Schlappen. But I'll tell you my one of the perfect little sizes are those are those little Schlappen packs um, that that you can buy the the little four to six inch or or smaller three to four inch. Um, those are an awesome size for these these flies. So I have a whole bunch of um, the whiting schlopping packs for the, the smaller sizes in here and it's they work fantastic all right so that's the longest feather that we have so the thing i like about this is that we can start up here at the longer feathers and we'll work our way down as we go through the through the fly okay so um i'll start about middle of the of the pelt this time and i'm going to go same distance down the feather We're printing those out. Once again, I can cut those off, tie us iced up babies with them. Okay. On this, I'm going to make sure that I'm solid. And then I'm going to hop it over the bead and create a little platform in which to tie on. So I've got a little platform that I can tie on here in the in the next section of beads. Same thing. So you notice that this is uh, is about a third shorter than the previous hackle. Okay, now we're not wanting much on here because we want to see those beads um, coming through. Okay, so I'm going to do two, maybe let's go for a third. This is a little bit lighter of a feather. Okay, got a couple hackle fibers trapped down there. Okay, so three wraps on the on the first section here. We'll go probably two on the next section, and then probably one and a half on the next section. So. We're going slightly shorter as we go down the, go to the front of the of the hook, and slightly less. Okay, get any of those uh, fibers down. Now, if you want to throw a half hitch in there or whatever to to kind of press save on your work, you definitely can. Okay, and we'll hop over to the next side here, create a little platform to tie off of, and then we're going to go again. We're going to go one third down the down. The, saddle again. Okay, so now I've got a slightly shorter feather here. Okay, I still want that webbiness, and that's what I love about this American saddle is that you get the webbiness down here at the bottom. Cut that off. Tie the smaller version of the iced up babies. Okay, this one because it's a little shorter, a little stiffer, you may have to roll it in your fingers a little bit to get it to, to lay backwards. Capture that one there. And then this last section, so hopping over the bead on this last section can be a little bit tedious if you, unless you use this trick. Just take your fingernail and you put it right behind those and give a couple wraps and then you're right behind that, that uh, dumbbell eye, okay? So if you use your fingernail as a ramp, no problem getting back there. Okay, on this last one, I'm going to go right down here on the bottom of the saddle. And I'm going to pick um, one that still has some webbiness, which I would say the majority of them have a, have, a, have a great webbiness down here at the bottom. And that's all we need is we only need one wrap in here. 
once again, just use your finger, let it pop down into those, those eyes there. Okay, I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna roll it in my fingers. And take my fingers and pull those other ones out of the way. And then I can capture that. Pull this all backwards, give a couple nice wraps to keep it all flowing backwards. Okay, I'm gonna hop over to this side and I can throw a whip finish here on the front. Okay, um, you can leave it just like this. If you're not a fan of, of resin or, or you know epoxy or whatever, I usually throw a little bit of resin here on the top. Um, if I'm going to be fishing them where I should be, which is up against rocks off, off of ledges and things like that. So you can pick your favorite resin, put a little bit of resin there on the thread wraps, and uh, that makes it a pretty bomb-proof pattern. So, um, man, I, I love this pattern. It's one of my, like I said, one of my top producing patterns for bass. Um, just a great all-around crayfish pattern, a tractor pattern. Um, having those uh, those claws in there, those that whiting crayfish orange that bleeds through the olive um just just a great little pattern um and uh really flashes when those when those uh beads get into the into the sunlight um and and radiate out of the water man it just it just pops and those those bass can't leave it alone so um i also like to fish it in trout waters um preferably i like to fish it in a in a more off color water um, throw it in slightly dirty water and some darker colors. Um, I like darker water, darker colors. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a great, great little pattern. So, uh, tie some of those up. Lots of different color combinations you can do. Those beads come in a, in a whole bunch of different colors. So, all right, let's see if we have any, any questions that we need here. Wait for some questions here. We got one more pattern in here. I want to thank Whiting Farms. Obviously, you can get any of the hackle that I'm using here is is top grade Whiting Farm stuff. But man, it is such a a fantastic um, price point. It's just it's awesome. Are the body beads glass? No, they're a plastic. Um, so they they're not they they're not they don't break at all. They they don't add a whole lot of weight to it. Um, so the thing that I love and the thing that I hear from guides all over is, is that this is one of those crayfish that just naturally feels like it falls like a natural crayfish does. It doesn't plummet like crazy. If you want to do that, if you want to hop and drop it and make it, make it really plummet like crazy, you can throw some lead eyes on there and really get that thing to drop, um, right where you put it. Um, but honestly, I, I fish them in both, uh, the, the large brass and the, the lead, um, on there as well. Um, and, and the body, the beads really don't weigh much at all. So, um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great way to, to add some flash and some, some segmentation without a whole lot of, uh, weight. Brian, they are articulation beads. They're called 3D beads. They're a hairline product. Let's see. And I will avoid to check. Perfect. Awesome. All righty. Um, okay, we're going to go to the last one. This one's more of a finesse craw. Um, this is kind of a hybrid of a couple different patterns that I've been tying over the years. The jigger knot is, an, is another one that I, I really like to, to, to do. And if you, if you um, haven't seen the video for that one, you're welcome to go over to my YouTube channel. I have a lot of videos over there as well as um, on my website, um, RockyMountainFlyDesign.com. Um, those are both both where, where my shop is and uh, where you can find any of my my patterns that I use with our whiting farms and, and some step-by-step -step tutorials, um, lots of different options there. Make sure that you like and subscribe, uh, make sure that you support whiting here on, on this one as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, none of these patterns would be possible without, without the quality of, of whiting here. So, uh, you just can't do this with other, with other, other hackle. So, 
All right, this last one is a little bit more of a finesse crop. Um, it's a little more um, concept based that, that just it, it looks buggy. It looks um, like a crawfish, uh, like a crawfish uh, silhouette, but is, is a little bit more um, finesse. You can you can throw it in rivers. You can throw it in in um, in uh, lakes. I like it for a lot of more clear water situations. Uh, this is the 4B, uh, 4BZ crop. So it uses a lot of 4B hen, um, and it's I've been calling it the 4BZ. So this is a, an Airx hook. It's a 26-degree bend and a large MFC cone. Okay, um, Do these in both brass and tungsten. Prefer to do them in brass just for the waters that I tend to, tend to fish. Um, and if I'm throwing them in, in lakes, or uh, excuse me, in rivers, I'm usually throwing them on a sink tip anyways. But it's a it's a great one to put under an indicator as well. You can also throw this on a on a uh, a straight eye hook and and do it as a balanced crawl. Um, lots of different options in this. So um, this is a a great little little pattern. Okay. So we're going to start out with uh, like I said, this is a twenty six degree Airex size one. I'll start out with a base of thread here. Okay, and we're going to start out with a little bit of flash. Let me get my stuff over here. Okay, we're going to start out with some dark brown crystal flash. I'm going to take about uh, four strands here. Now, four strands, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out of the, um, the hank or the bundle. I'm going to fold it over. And I'm going to clip it in half. Now I've got eight strands. Okay, fold it over one more time, clip it, now I got 16 strands. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it off the front here and I'm just going to tie it back just a little bit and I'm going to fold it over. Okay. And then I'm going to cut it a little longer, a little shorter than shank length, probably a half shank length. Okay. I'm going to take uh, some of this kind of root beer colored crystal flash, take about half as much. Same process. Fold it over, cut it, fold it over, cut it. And then do, not do the, the last cut. So it's half as much. And cut that just a just a hair shorter than the dark brown. Okay. And then uh, I've been using a lot of these voodoo fibers. I think they're kind of a neat way to, to add some texture and some, some motion and some color. Okay, so I'm going to take these are the, the black barred blue. Same thing, I'm going to take it and I'll fold it over, cut it. Fold it over, cut it. Now you can vary the amount of actual color you want in here just by the number of times that you cut it or the amount that you have in there. I just always like to tie in things um, at the midpoint and fold them over. It makes them stronger and never going to pull out. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it over the top of my thread. Okay, And I am going to place this on my side. Okay. I'm going to take that and I'm going to fold it. I'm going to wrap it back just a little bit and fold it over the other side. This is a good way to put a little bit of subtle inside of the claw color um, to your to your fly without having to make it. I mean, I really uh, appreciate the people that like to glue the different rabbit street pieces together and and really there's been some amazing stuff out there with with gluing and and 
putting colors and dabs of different resin and stuff like this. I just hide a little bit of color on the inside of the claws and I feel like it does a very similar effect. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of, um, this is olive pine squirrel. Okay. And I'm gonna cut it just a hair longer than the flash. Do that on both sides. Actually, I'm going to go just a, just a tiny bit shorter than that. So it's, when pulled out straight, it's about an eighth of an inch longer than the flash. Okay, now you can leave the blue out there a little bit. I'm going to trim it back just a little bit so it's about the same length as the leather on the claws. Gives that little flash of blue as it's coming through. Okay, so get some nice blue in there. You get some brown, some tan. Um, gives a nice little kick in the front. Okay, all right. Press save. Okay, so love the 4B. Um, oh, let's add a couple little antenna here. Um, these are black crystal flash. All I'm gonna do is just take two pieces, fold it over. And I'm going to put them on the bottom side here. If they come out the bottom, they're going to function as antenna. Okay, so coming out, I'm going to keep those as long, longer than any of the others. Okay, pull those off. Again, like 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, if this was a, uh, a clock, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Okay. All right, so the, the 4B part of this Okay, I love these these 4B um, handbacks. They they just <laughs> you can't beat the price. You can't beat the the quality of feathers that you get out of these. Love the modeling. Um, just the a great a great way to 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 stretch a dollar here and and do this the right way. Okay, so um, I'm gonna take um, right here from kind of the three quarters way down where everybody kind of makes their prime selection for most of their flies. Um, you can tell that that's exactly where I use a lot of mine. Um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to um, tip out the, the feather. I'm going to put a collar of 4B hackle right here at the at the back side, which is actually the front of the claw, the crop. Okay. Pop that tip. Again, the quality of the thin stem, I absolutely love this because I can get a little bit of marabou on there you just can't get that with with other companies um it's just not possible so you you get that marabou in there you don't have to save you from tying in another material um it's also just a, a great color that matches everything because it comes from the same feather came from the same bird so um just can't beat that so it gives you a little bit of legs out here in the front here's a little bit of marabou um now if you go to uh take a look at the crayfish they will be dark on top, but they'll have uh, they'll have a, a, a creamy underbody to them. And uh, one of my favorite dubbings that I've grown to love over the over the years is uh, Pat Cohen's carp dub. Um, and this is what's called Alfredo cream, and it's uh, it's a dubbing that's got some little micro legs cut into it. Um, I have the the pleasure to be in Pat Cohen's new book, um, Super Bass Flies. Um, got a number of patterns in there. If you haven't picked up that book. Uh, great little little book to, to pick up, but Pat Cohen's got this uh, this great dubbing that's got some little micro legs that are dyed the same coloration as uh, as the dubbing are, and we're going to use the Alfredo cream, which is kind of that uh, creamy underbody, perfect for our crayfish. So I'm going to take one more 4B feather, and I'm going to tip it out, tie this in. Now you have two options here. Okay, I like to put the weight at the front, but if you are feeling really finicky and you want to put the weight and slide this up into the, the crayfish, 
I've done that on a number of these these patterns as well, and it hides that that weight a little bit. Uh, doesn't have changes the action just a little bit to it, but uh, that's a that's another option at this point in the fly that you can make um, that judgment call on. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of this Alfredo cream dubbing. Now you can use any cream color dubbing that you that you want, but I'm just going to start to build a little bit of an underbody here. It's a good spot if you want to throw it in a dubbing loop as well, if you want it to be a little shaggier. I like to make them a little bit thinner, a little bit tighter. Let them, if I need to, I can pick it out. But it's a pretty buggy fly in the first place, so. It's going to make kind of that reverse taper that we did on the last fly as well. The thing I like is that the more this, this fly gets eaten, the, the buggier it gets because that, that uh, dubbing starts to get picked out and things. Okay, so I'm going to take this 4B and I'm going to uh, palmer this through. Just open wrap spiral. Uh-oh. Did that go away? Okay. All right, sorry about that. I went away for a second on my screen. All right. So I'm going to keep Palmer in through. And then on some of these really long ones, you might be able to get two or three even um, wraps of uh, that marabou before you have to clip off and tie another one in. Okay. So we'll just, wherever we have to tie off, I'll just add a little more Alfredo cream dubbing here. Oh, got to tie in another. Okay, and on this last one here, I'll just go a little bit further down the, down the pelt, get back to some smaller. Okay. And then before we get too far here, I'll just set that cone. Just put a little extra dubbing on there and, and set that cone. That cone being on that 26 degree jig hook um, gives you a nice stand up um, on the bottom. So it'll the cone will come to rest on the bottom, kicks the front end of the cray up a little bit, as well as uh, easy to get some extra motion in the water when you're, when you're kind of jigging this through. All right, so we'll tie off right behind that cone there. Okay, so you get a really nice mix of, of marabou and uh, and hen, and uh, that you can see that creamy underbody just kind of bleed through there, and when that thing gets wet and it starts to move, and you start to move that, and you really start swimming that fly, um, that creamy underbody really just gets um, shown in on every single strip. All right, we're going to flip the fly. We're going to finish up with a top carapace color. All right, so same same dubbing that uh, we're going to switch from an Alfredo cream to um, an olive bar. Okay, and the olive bar is kind of just like a martini olive coloration. Um, it's got some nice rubber legs in it as well. Okay, and on this, all I'm looking for is something that's going to drape over the top. When you when you strip this uh, this bug, what it's going to do is it's just going to come over the top of the fly and give you a nice coloration on top while keeping that creamy grayish um, underbody to it. So I've got a clump of this of this fiber here and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to stack it. Okay, So I'm pulling 
the longest portions out and I'm putting it back on top of each other. Okay, so I'm gonna do that until I have all the fibers kind of aligned lengthwise. Okay, sometimes just, just give it into a, make it into a nice rope, pull it until you can't pull anymore without ripping the dubbing, okay? So what that means is that you've got the longest fibers in this whole thing and you can take some of the shorter ones and they'll pull out from the end because those are not long enough, okay? So you want the longest fibers in in there, okay? Now these fibers are, are fairly long, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tie this in in the middle of this clump, okay? I can kind of take this, pull this down and back to the side, and I'm gonna take this clump of dubbing and I'm going to tie it in the middle. Now, if you were thinking of this like spent spinner wings, it's exactly what you're doing, okay? So you're gonna tie it in once here, and you're gonna X wrap over the top of it and pull it off to the side. Okay, now you can start to kind of finagle it through here. And what I try to do is, as I try to catch one wrap over the top of that dummy. Okay, I can go ahead and whip finish off. I can comb this so that it spreads it nice and out so it's no longer in a clump. And what that does, it gives you a darker olive color on the top with kind of that brownish creamy gray color on the bottom. And you can take this thing and just kind of um, high stick it through. You can, you can dead drift it underneath an indicator. Um, you can make this uh, in some of the shallow water when bass are crashing crashing the shallows and kind of picking off crayfish out of the shallows. But this has been a great little trout pattern as well. Um, like I said, it's kind of a combination of a couple different patterns that I that I tie. Um, check out the jigger knot for the, for the bigger one in here. But this has been uh, kind of a work in progress with, um, it was a swing fly originally, the 4BZ was a, was a swing fly um, that I was working on. But this, uh, this ends up being a really neat little crayfish pattern here. Um, that has some some kind of out front, um, very kind of impressionistic of that crayfish. Um, allows you to, to fish it for multiple species and really easy to alter some coloration in there um, with the vast variety of dye colors that that Whiting has um, in their four Bs and and even the even the you could get away with even the larger side of of the Brahma hen um, stuff in the in the back here. So and even just some of those webby feathers on any of your hen capes and. And things, but I, I really like these four B capes. Um, so, anyways, um, yeah, just some. Hopefully, hopefully you got some uh, some some things that you can take back to your tying bench, and some things that you can uh, maybe uh, take into your own patterns, and and maybe just tie some of these as well. Um, that's that's the three patterns that I that I looked at for today. Uh, I'm looking if there's there's any. Uh, questions here i'll let the kind of the video catch up i know there's delay from where i'm at um to where you guys are at so we'll see if there's any um comments or questions that we have in here daniel good to see you brian good to see you jamie good to see you norman good to see you bud yeah those those micro voodoo fibers are a really neat um, really neat thing. I, I've, they're, they're fairly new in my book, um, in my kind of tying and repertoire. It's, it's kind of been something that's new, um, to my tying. And so it's, it's, it's opened up a couple different options, but there's some really unique, um, thought process, um, or some really unique things that I can put in my thought process with those, uh, voodoo fibers. And, um, I just like how, the, the barring, the spacing of the barring allows me to have a little bit different color variation in there. Um, but, um, 
Good, good. Well, hey, uh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for everybody that, that tuned in tonight, and I appreciate everybody that's going to watch this afterwards. Uh, it'll be up on the Whiting, Whiting page. Uh, if, uh, if I can help in any way possible, you can find me at RockyMountainFlyDesign.com um, or on uh, the Whiting Pro Team page. It has all my contact information on there as well. Um, can't thank uh, Tom and well, all the Toms, Tom Ski and and Tom Whiting, um, for everything that they do, Phil and Colette and everybody in the in the office. Uh, just can't can't thank you enough for everything that you do for us um, and and making the best best uh, feathers in the world. And uh, I'm just a uh, I'm I'm proud to be a part of part of this pro team. If I can help in any way possible, um, please don't hesitate to reach out um, and uh, and tell me how I can help you. So thank you so much to everybody. We'll uh, have a good night, and we'll we'll see you soon.